content warning. I'm going to talk about the final Star Wars trilogy on the internet. I'm going to talk about a lot more than just Rise of Skywalker, and then I'm never going to talk about Star Wars again, okay? Okay. To quote the GOAT, This is not going to go the way you think. It is. This show has a history of trying to make video essays for the moment we're in. Using pop culture to illustrate our collective wistfulness is captivating to me. COVID's gone on so long, we're all rose meandering across the deck, wondering what it all cost. I personally believe that video essays are the best medium in the world for informing people right now, for actually moving a needle. And then The Last Jedi Wars of 2016 and 2017 changed the landscape forever. I want to talk about Star Wars for the final time on Movies with Mikey and retire from this hell dimension of discourse pasta. It was a thing I used to enjoy, and I did enjoy Rise of Skywalker on the same level I enjoy the prequels. Just a bunch of Flash Gordon shit. Keep your distance, though, Jerry, but don't look like you're trying to keep your distance. I don't know. Fly casual. <laughs> what was that all about? Well, R2 has been... Uh, you know those wire jokes. Did I say anything? He's trying. I didn't say anything. Hey, where are we? You're on your way to the planet Mongo. Mongo? Oh, oh. Rise of Skywalker illustrates on two simultaneous levels the hardest thing to land is a trilogy. And they had to land two at once. You have to wrap everything up, a thing no third movie in a Star Wars trilogy has ever done. Let me put it this way, Rise of Skywalker is definitely the Revenge of the Sith and the Return of the Jedi of its trilogy. Oh no. You get new ghosts in those ones. Star Wars was a cool exploration in the very late 70s and early 80s about having severe abandonment father issues and it turned out the fix for that was letting your guard down and being like no power comes in other forms and maybe compassion is the answer. That's the story of Star Wars and why a lot of people fell in love with it in the first place. A lot of families are understatedly imperfect in the entirety of the 1980s, but it was kind of nice to know as a kid that other families are screwed up too. Next came George Lucas making the prequel trilogy trying to make one, two, and three. Two mixed reviews at the time. I think people like them now. And then Disney took a crack at a sequel trilogy to make back that $4 billion investment, a thing they definitely did. It's all profit now. Unleash the content hounds. I think it's why Lost Soul Luke was so hard for a lot of people to grapple with. Heroes don't get happy endings in Star Wars. This melancholy courses through the very veins of the franchise. Again, it's like poetry, so sort if of they rhyme. Mm -hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. And today we're going to talk a hell of a lot about rhyming. The Rise of Skywalker is film 9 in the hastily named Skywalker Saga, directed by one J.J. Don't Do a Sequel Unless It's MI3 Abrams. The movie was written by J.J. and Chris Terrio, the latter name you know from Batman v Superman Hang On, and he won an Oscar for his work on Argo. Rise of the Skywalks has the unenviable distinction of being one of the only double trilogy cappers of all time. And let's be honest, this pop culturifying trilogies thing was a Star Wars original anyway. The modern trilogy has to satisfy both the ending of its own trilogy of characters Characters, but of the larger arc characters as a whole. 
The Skywalker Saga, December 2019. We were promised the culmination of it all. And let's be real about the stakes here. The writer and director's chairs saw enough turnover that it was going to mean hitting the ground sprinting. This movie was supposed to be built around Carrie Fisher's Princess Leia. This was supposed to be her character's story and movie, her ending. All footage of Carrie Fisher and Princess Leia in this movie is deleted footage from Force Awakens. December 20th, 2019 is the day this movie came out. For years, Rise of Skywalker was the last movie I saw in a theater. We were all about to be stuck at home. This is literally the last moment the world was normal. Okay, normal adjacent. Oh, okay, look, humanity's having a rough one right now and we'll do better tomorrow. Humans like trilogies. It is beaten into our skulls from an early age that stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Haha, <laughs> what's up my guys? It's your boy Coke Brian just checking in making sure it's all chill. Hey, quick thought, what if stories uh didn't end? What if we could just continue exploring that revenue stream, my guys? What's up? Do you think it accidental in any way that the Mandalorian started airing before Rise of Skywalker came out in theaters? Disney had already pivoted. Wake up, Neo. Rise of Skywalker isn't really an ending to Star Wars. If anything, it signaled the absolute content tornado that Disney was about to unleash on the world. They got exactly what they wanted. What does a trilogy mean to a world that no longer believes in endings? All stories have a beginning, a middle, a middle, a middle, a middle, a middle, a middle, a mid. The machine took over. Why end? anything. We live in the reality of perpetual middles. We are in the perpetual middle of a pandemic. There is no end. First, we're going to talk about the one thing in this movie that I absolutely loved most. Oh, what could it be? I think generally movies have more thought put into them than audiences give them credit for. I want to talk about Rey Skywalker and her journey. I'd probably get your keyboards ready for this one. I like Rey's journey and where it ends in the new trilogy. This movie has some execution problems, indebatably, but Rey raised herself. She makes multiple mentions in her journey of wanting to belong to something. Regardless of who her parents canonically were, they abandoned her and she raised herself. A thing she clearly acknowledges, I think it's cool as shit she double denounces Palpatine by choosing to adopt a moniker that came to mean Skywalker's house of orphan souls. They were all orphans. Because you're a Palpatine. The twist in this movie is that, oh whoops, actually your parents were saints that saved your life by abandoning you, a thing that has some enormous effect on her. Rey Skywalker super lands for me when taken in the context of culminating the entire arc of numbered Star Wars movies. Anakin to Luke to Rey. Three people the world threw away, and oops, turned out the most powerful Jedi's ever. Aw, I should have seen that one coming. Rey is the last Jedi, in fact. Oh, I get, oh, okay. And I will not be the last Jedi. I think the clever machinations of Star Wars as a narrative construct are slightly obscured by their execution sometimes. Flash Gordon tends to do that. Of course Luke is a lonely recluse, scarred by being the good guy for too long. By Skywalker law, Rey has to lose her way, which is kinda hastily portrayed, but it is in this movie. Rey is a woman who enjoys bouncing around alone inside of old war machinery. She's a scavenger that becomes a Jedi that pretty much guarantees that the new eccentric hermit of Tatooine is Rey. I like this ending, it makes sense. 
Word of mouth on this entire trilogy is understandably mixed, though also Star Wars got all mixed up in a dumb culture war, have a Mandalorian. Rey earned her solitude and solace. Okay, let's get into a gray area. You see what I did there? Does everybody see what I did there? You're probably wondering when I'm going to talk about all the stuff in this movie, like Disney's reckless use of conscripted child soldiers and commenting on that none percent. Okay, one, one percent. The woo is haunting. Speaking it into the clearness of day, this movie was widely panned for being a chaotic mess that conveniently brought a character back from the dead because clouds and Rey just usurped herself into the Skywalker familia as like a last second. Bam! It made Game of Thrones season eight look like it took considered time with character decisions. Boom! The gentle menliest rejoinder. Have at you. You want the realist take? Star Wars has always been stupid. Literally, it's in the DNA, do a bunch of silly Flash Gordon shit and put more science stuff around. Savage Oppress? I'm just gonna leave that right there. Droopy McCool, Jack Porkins, Salacious B. Crumb. I can do this all day. Therm Scissor Punch? Suck a lobster, what does that even mean? Methinks maybe people take Star Wars a little too seriously because they smush their biggest insecurities into its contents. It's kind of the ultimate entertainment because you get what you put into it. Everybody has somebody in Star Wars. It is somehow universal art told on a giant blank canvas. In every way I can mean this, Star Wars is Twilight, which is amazing. That's what escapism is supposed to be. And yes, accidentally, I just made a really good argument for Twilight. Does it matter that the nine film Star Wars saga didn't really add up to anything? It's just nine movies that kind of rhyme. Oh, shit. Will our heroes escape from the trash compactor? Find out next week. Do movies owe us anything? Because at some point, what are we mad about? The best defense I can possibly make for Star Wars is that it's dumb as shit, and you know 100% that's why you love it. The realest feedback I could give Star Wars as a brand is that it truly doesn't seem to understand its own special kind of camp. I'm not saying don't hate this movie. Yeah, let it, let it out, let it out. I'm saying we've always thought Star Wars did it wrong for every movie but the first one. Yes, especially Empire. I made a whole thing about that one. Star Wars is the ultimate you know when it's right type of series. Because everyone scare quotes knows when it's wrong. The bantha in the room is that people violently cling to the Star Wars movies they hate more than the Star Wars movies they love. I think that's worth speaking out into the air. Which brings us to Lore Burritos. This is going to seem esoteric for a moment. This will all come full circle. I promise, hear me out. Lore Burritos are things that need to be consumed. So you can consume more Lore Burritos. We live in a complex moment in time. You, right now. There is more readily accessible entertainment being produced on a daily basis vying for your attention than any other moment through all of time. We opened Pandora's box and we monetized every f***ing thing in there. It all changed so fast. Watch time rules the schoolyard on every platform, so let me simplify that. They don't care what you watch or if you're enjoying it. They care that you stay on their platform. Enjoy your stay. Have a lore burrito. Here, I'll use Boba Fett as an example. Boba appeared originally in the Star Wars Holiday Special in 1978. I am Boba Fett. The ship you seek is nearby. Leading to a small appearance in Empire and ultimately being devoured in Jedi. <laughs> Bubba's on screen for six and a half total minutes of screen time. He was a character introduced in a cartoon. This character was so popular that audiences refused to believe that Boba T was dead for so long that he literally got fan theorized back to life. And don't bring up the books right now, holy crap. Meanwhile, 
Fans waited damn near 40 years to have Boba Fett's miraculous resurrection canonized into a delicious lore burrito. He wakes up and, and just crawls out. Wait, no, hang on, that can't be. It's right there, he just crawls out. No, it's... Huh. What's your story, mysterious stranger? Me? I was tasked with hunting down the most dangerous man in the galaxy. Then I got swallowed by a land mouth. Everyone let Rise of Skywalker fade into the breeze because the Mandalorian was a well-executed riff on Lone Wolf and Cub. But, you know, people were like, ah, finally, Star Wars represents me again. And I'm just so tired of that whole argument. Star Wars represents everybody. There's certainly enough of it now to make different stuff for different people. Because we're all different people on this warbling chunk of space dust we call a planet hurtling through the unknown galaxy. We open in space, large and inexplicable letters appear on screen and break my suspension of disbelief because I know letters can't do that. I have a website, I'm very smart. The dead speak. It was in fact the first sentence that I think caused consternation in the audience, a one-two punch of brand synergy signaling we aren't in Kansas anymore. At last the work of generations is complete. The great error is corrected. The Emperor announced they were alive and they did it in a battle royale, which this movie just confirms. Oh, no, he's fine. He's right there. Okay, well. The dead speak. In three paragraphs, we are told that Kylo was looking all over the galaxy for the Emperor. And uh, Kylo Ren has taken a gap year to trash the galaxy and look for the Phantom Emperor. He was the Phantom Menace. After all, eh, it's Flash Gordon rules. Just pretend there was a whole episode before this one. And this movie wastes absolutely no time hitting the visual bar that the new trilogy set. Trailer shots, the movie. But I think for a lot of people, this movie feels incomplete. A fairly mild criticism of a movie with an imperfect trajectory from the outset. But I've talked to a lot of people that love this movie, or at the very least understand it, and there is no understanding it. It has an interesting structure. The end of us is the beginning of you. The dead speak. End of the Jedi. There's only the one, and literally all of Star Wars shows up to help her. Be with me. It's pretty sweet, actually. The Jedi aren't here to fight the Star Wars anymore, so now it's just... people. Where did they get all these fighter craft? They have no navy. It's not a navy, sir. It's just... people. A story ends. The story of the Jedi. I have zero doubt that Disney will spend the next 40 years making TV shows to fill in all of these swings of fancy. Like why they make all these Snokes? Find out next week on Snoke Up, a new kids weekly show on Disney Play. That rules. The new trilogy is sort of unapologetically, but also chaotically about the end of the Jedi and the rise of the Skywalker. See what I did here? You see, when Disney establishes a new post 789 trilogy continuity, probably about this kid because he exists on Wikipedia, see he's right there. Ray will be his aged mentor and heroically die. Is it, does this even count as spoilers if I'm just telling you what Star Wars is? The dead speak because nothing stays dead when you're a brand. You get from art what you put into it. You get from Star Wars what you put into it, which is to say, if all you care about is that seven of nine Star Wars movies didn't do it for you, maybe that's a you problem? More succinctly, Flash Gordon was kind of all about plot holes. That's a feature, not a bug. But also, the Star Wars brand is vastly larger than the nine film series. That's been true since the Ewoks. 
nearing what hopefully will be the end of COVID. I realize I can just let Star Wars go. Pretty much the whole life of this show, I've been talking about it. It takes something out of you after a while. Poetry is an art form. More loose connected thoughts and ideas than straightforward forced narrative. Haha, <laughs> what's up? Hey, it's your boy Psycho Death Snot coming at you with some more reactions. I don't even think ravens can talk. Read up, Edgar. Looks like Mr. Alan Poe didn't go to Wikipedia. Here is where I think it gets a little weird. I'm not sure Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams were ever in the same room. A lot of people openly hate the new trilogy. I'm sure they're doing it in the comments right now. I'm cool with that. You do you, boo. I've done this dance before. First time. And here's the sad part. My biggest failure in the Star Wars respect is that I predicted Star Wars was what we needed to help the world heal during... It sounds absolutely stupid to say oh. it out loud, but the world is a better place measurably this because guy. Star Feelings. Wars exists okay. in it. I can't think of a single franchise that has been responsible for more joy being put Cringe. out into the world than Star Wars. That ain't Cringe. nothing. Star Wars families are broken because they simply wait around to be shattered. Oh, that's sad. Oh. Full disclosure, if I was 12, The Mandalorian would have been the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. In a binge-obsessed culture, empty calories prevail. YouTube said the quiet part out loud once upon a time when they switched from view count to watch time. The platform wars have begun. Oh, hell content. I love that people loved Rise of Skywalker. I love that people hated Rise of Skywalker. And hey, if you were waiting around to see these movies in a new light because I gave you a really dumb thing to do, get ready. Here's a bit of chaotic good out in the world. I'm gonna say four numbers. You ready? Seven, nine, seven, eight. I think JJ basically just made a sequel to his own movie and not The Last Jedi so much. 7978. Seven, Embrace the chaos. Just as Disney has smoothed the edges of a trilogy they didn't make, I would assume they will do everything in their power to smooth the edges of the one they did. Zac Efron is Emperor Palpatine prequel series. Disney, I want my royalty check for that. I mean, you know the Knights of Ren are getting a show. We didn't learn shit about them. I'm sure it'll be awesome. Honestly, I just don't find being a popular media critic in the age of internet binge culture is as rewarding. Which only really means I'm done talking about Star Wars and Marvel in a world where it isn't exactly easy to keep up with either. You know what I am going to talk about? Everything. You know, movies. I'm sure it'll make some people upset, but I'm fine with Rise of Skywalker. It's silly, but we always get mad when Star Wars is silly. I've done this dance before. But when media gets this large in scale, everyone in the audience is looking for something different. Unrelated to anything, here's a free pro tip. You don't have to tear other people down to build yourself up. The world needs more compassion right now, not less. I guess that was all a roundabout way of saying. 